back on Getting a Grip on the Michigan Business Network. So glad you're with us. David DeJong is my guest this week. And David, we've covered a lot of ground. We've talked about EOS foundational tools. We've talked about your EOS journey, uh, how you got started. Um, we've broken some myths around EOS that it's only for small companies, uh, that you can't be visionary and integrator. You've also thrown a warning out there that be careful if you're going to do that, that it, it's not easy. Um, any advice for companies that are considering EOS? They may have read Traction or heard about it. Um, any thoughts you'd, you'd share with them? I guess my first thought is start today. I mean, it always starts, any journey starts with a single step. Um, read the book. Talk to your leadership team. It can be done at all levels, at all sizes of companies, but it takes some risk of someone stepping out and going like, you know what, this could be transformational for my company. And you're going to find if you go down the journey, it will be. But just yeah. take the step. Take That's the good step. advice. Yeah, and I would I would recommend also, I'd add to that by saying, um, reach out to uh, an EOS implementer to do what's called a 90. I'm an EOS implementer. If you want to reach out to me, you can, or you can look up somebody in your area. If you go to EOS Worldwide, all the implementers are on their website. Uh, in the 90, I have yet to meet an EOS professional implementer who is trying to sell you on anything. So they're gonna come in and do a 90 minute session with your leadership team and just tell you everything that EOS is, what the foundational tools are, how the journey works, what their implementation style is. It's up to you to decide whether it's a fit or not. And and uh, I think you'd agree with me, I've not met, and it probably goes back to Gino and Don Tinney's philosophy, but you know nobody's out there trying to, to force fit it. If it's right. not a fit for you, no harm done, but those are free. So. I would recommend that. Hey, something else I want to get into before we're out of time is our listeners would be interested in this. You are a boxing, professional boxing judge. Yes, as a hobby. I know people say, how can you be a, a president, CPA, and a boxing judge? Uh, I mean, quick story. I mean, I think it does come back to one of the core values. It's it's about being great rather than good. I was actually, Mike, I was watching TV, like Friday Night Fights on ESPN um, in 2011, and the boxing card was in Michigan, uh, and the judging wasn't very well, very good. The ESPN announcers were kind of being very harsh on the judges, and I thought I could do better than this. I can do better than this. It started there. I can do better than this. So, so it's like those companies that want to take, say, can I do EOS? Take take a step and try. So I did that. I called the state of Michigan, um, and uh, eventually. Uh, uh, got a whole bunch of stuff done and did uh went to kansas city within two weeks i won a national outstanding official award and a lot wow. of these a lot of these veterans are going like what who are you but uh, <laughs> it's been a, a a 12 10 year 10 11 year journey right now uh, I've, I've been blessed to do world title fights i just did a uh, a main event on espn the last couple of months and i got a big fight coming up that i gotta fly down to miami but it's it's still to me even that even that mike comes back to eos it's like Taking a risk, pursuing great. Yeah, you could pursue great whether it's in your business or your personal life. It's about not settling just for average. And I think you can apply that across really your whole entire life, your emotional life, spiritual life, your family, the whole the whole thing. So take a risk, take a step. That's I guess I can encourage people to do. That is so well said, and it also ties into another benefit that I've experienced and I know you have from EOS, which is the freedom to pursue other passions. Once once you get traction in your business, you get you get this thing running on a, on a common vision, healthy habits, and you get momentum underneath you, I found that I had freedom to pursue other passions. For you, it was judging boxing. For me, it's implementing EOS. Um, so I, you know, I have my day job, but I have freedom. I have the time because it's not like I'm pushing the business up a hill anymore. The business has its own momentum, yeah. right? I'm and I'm playing a role in it. Yeah, Mike, I got one last thing. Um, my uh, uh, senior VP of sales, when we implemented EOS, six months he was a skeptic. Six months later, he he came over and gave me a hug, and he goes, "Dave, <laughs> I don't get it. I'm getting more done, and I have more time. It's almost counter, right? Yeah. So EOS can do marvelous things for companies." If they take that step, yeah, I've shared this before uh, on the on the you know with lots of people. Um, but when I I did a survey, you know, we all do staff surveys, and it was about eight months after we started our EOS journey 
And I put a question in that simply said, on a scale of one to 10, how important is EOS to our success, to our future success? And my company is an, was an IT company, is an IT company. The, the folks that work for us are not, they're not high graders. I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty uh, resistant to change. They're technical. They're, you know, they, they challenge every thought. Um, it's the only question I've ever asked in a survey, though, where 100% of the staff rated it a 10. Yes. And I knew, I remember looking at my integrator and I said, I couldn't take EOS out if I wanted to. Like, and I don't want to, but I couldn't. I, I I feel the same. I give it a, a solid 10 too, because um, that structure and discipline accountability that even grows on what you already had established is just so critical and to lose that would be just detrimental. Well, thanks, David, for being on. Thanks for sharing your thoughts, your experience. It's been a blast talking to you, my friend. And uh, for those of you who are interested in learning more about Baylor Young, you can find out more at their website, which is BaylorYoung.com. Correct. Yep. B slash Y.com. B slash Y.com. And uh, thanks again for being with us. Thanks to all of you for listening. We'll be back next week on Getting a Grip on the Michigan Business Network.